What is this name? It says Amelia and Lucy for my daughters. When three-year-old Amelia Hurwitz was admitted to Rady Children's Hospital in February. Hot medicine. You didn't like the hot medicine, I know. She had a high fever, swollen lymph nodes in her neck, and red cracked lips. She started having the rash, she started having red hands and feet that were swelling a little bit, and then her eyes were also getting very bloodshot. Her mother, Laura Hurwitz, says doctors immediately ruled out the flu, staph infection, mono. As her symptoms kept more and more were coming and they were becoming more prevalent, that's when uh, they took her in for the echocardiogram and she was identified as um, Kawasaki disease. Ready? One, two, three, go! Amelia is one of 50 <laughs> children in San Diego County to be diagnosed with Kawasaki disease since January. That's three times more than usual. The disease generally affects children under the age of five. Left untreated, it can fatally damage the heart in one of four children. Kawasaki disease to me is the most compelling mystery in cl clinical pediatrics right now because the answer seems like it must be staring us in the face. Dr. Jane Burns is a professor of pediatrics at UC San Diego and director of the Kawasaki Disease Research Center. She says most of the children recently diagnosed in San Diego County were treated early enough to prevent heart damage, but for some, even early treatment wasn't enough. She says those children will require lifelong treatment. And without the proper follow-up, which can keep all of these individuals safe, there can be disastrous consequences. Burns and her team meet every week to discuss new research and review cases. We don't think like high temperature causes Kawasaki right. disease or even high temperature is linked to whatever the thing is. That team includes Jennifer Burney, an environmental scientist with UC San Diego. We actually we think these are just more indicators of atmospheric conditions. Burney believes the culprit may be air flowing across the Pacific Ocean from Asia to San Diego, stirred up by unusual weather patterns. What we know is that historically in San Diego County, when you see these moments of high incidence of, of Kawasaki, they're associated with uh, a set of conditions, so higher temperatures, higher daytime and nighttime temperatures, um, and uh, reduced circulation across the Pacific. Bernie says pockets of air get trapped, and that seems to be linked to a spike in cases. The unknown is what exactly is in the air that triggers the disease, which is found all over the world. Her research points to aerosol particles. Some of these come from natural sources like, um, like dust or sea salt. Uh, some of them are biologic, fungus, bacteria, virus, um, and some of them are from anthropogenic activity, things like burning fossil fuels or um, transportation emissions or uh, uh, burning biomass in particular uh, puts a lot of aerosols up into the atmosphere. Bernie is studying data on when and where kids are getting sick to try to catch the culprit. We need to figure out sort of statistically how to sample for something that's kind of sparse potentially in the atmosphere. How do you do that in a way that you might actually catch the thing at the moment that it is exposing kids? The current paradigm is that if you are born with the genetic susceptibility, you will get Kawasaki disease. It's just a question of when you'll come across the trigger. Dr. Burns, director of the research team, dedicated her life to studying the disease after one of her patients died of it 35 years ago. She says children of all races have been sickened, but Asian children and boys are at a higher risk. She imagines a time in the near future when every baby will be genetically screened for the disease. And then we would vaccinate them so they would never need to suffer Kawasaki disease, and we would just wipe it out. That's my dream. That's my dream. That's a better world. Susan Murphy, KPBS News.